What's up guys? More shit. So here we got a package from Diesel Geek. If you guys don't know who Ge Diesel Geek is, they make all types of parts related to your shifter. So if you're a DSG guy, uh, this does not apply to you, but for my manual bros, I saw this is uh, this is something you might be interested in. So this video might be a little bit out of order. This is only one of four packages that are supposed to come today. Two more are supposed to come from USPS. This one came from USPS as well this morning. It says they'll be here by eight. Our roommate said that they come come back and make another round around the neighborhood at seven, but we'll see. But I, I want to get these. Out. I'm going to unbox this, eat, and then go throw it in the car. And then my uh, South Bend Stage Stage Three clutch should be here today as well. That's coming from FedEx, so um, yeah, let's just open this. So what we have right here are some new bushings. They're like a plastic composite type, but okay, so in the car, your shifter, um, it presses down, it, it's spring, there's a spring there. You press it down so you can uh, unlock it to go into reverse. Well, the bushings, Above and below the spring, they slide into a slot, and they're like they're like shitty rubber, cheap, not good, and they break down over time. And even with the rubber itself, if you put the shifter into the locking position, which I'll show you, uh, the, the shifter has a little bit of play. Um, if you go on Diesel Geek's website, he goes through and, and shows all of this. If you're a manual guy, I seriously recommend just look up Diesel Geek shifter or something and then go to their website and look at all the things they offer um but yeah so we're, we're going to be replacing those bushings today i also have a solid shifter bracket coming from shop dap ours is composite and dog and then uh the bushings for that bracket are rubber stock and uh, i ordered solid ones from 034 so that all should be here today but this is the only parts that are inside the car for now i'm probably going to order it's something called a super pin that Diesel Geek makes, and that's supposed to get a lot a rid of a lot of slop from left to right. It does require you taking out the entire center console and taking out this big pin that's in the back of the uh, the whole shifter assembly. But uh, that's another video for another time. I'm gonna sit down and eat, hang out with my dog for a little bit, and then we'll go throw these in the car. Hopefully, the rest of those parts come today. The clutch won't be going in for a couple weeks anyway. I'm not really too worried about that, but the, the shifter stuff, I wanted to get it all done today. First steps to doing this, open here. Get your, get your fingers behind here. Lift, pull up, boom. As you can see, I have some, uh, some copper wire here I used. If you've never removed this assembly before, you do have to take your shifter off. Um, it's just like a, a clip here, obviously, if you're gonna go do it, you'll see. And you have to cut it. Um, some people use zip ties, whatever. Uh, metal zip tie would probably work best. I had this laying around. Uh, the copper is like easily pliable. Just you know, twist it on, twist it off, and it and it holds this in place. Doesn't go anywhere. But uh, all right, once you have your clip or whatever you have holding your shifter on, pull your shifter off. Now this, you can see it goes up and down. So we're gonna go down. I'm gonna put. The locker's on there. I'm going to hold the spring down and then pull this clip right here out. So we're going to go down. All right. Pull. Hold the spring down and uh, you, you guys just watched me do it. Okay. So you can see this, this bushing. This is the top one. I can like ply the fuck out of this. Okay. Spring comes off. Set that aside. Now oh, there's another bushing down here. Get it out with my nail. Um, that looks like this. Also very pliable and junk. Here they are right next to each other. You got this one and this one. You can see, you know, I can squeeze and throw that. This is nice and hard. I don't know if it's uh, composite. I don't know if it's 3D printed or what, but it's, I mean, it's hard. It's not going anywhere. And you can see the difference between uh, these two as well. If you haven't figured it out by now, they go back in the same way they come out. 
um, long side goes down. You want to kind of like hold on to your shift or two. You got to realize there's supposed to be a spring on there. So push that baby down. All right, get the spring. This is going to be the, the fun part. So this goes on top of the spring and you got to get your clip back in. And there's a little slot under the like knurling there. So it's got to press down pretty far. And you're kind of have to you're gonna have to pull up on your shifter with one hand and push down the spring, or clamp the spring with something. But I'm just gonna do a little one-two. See, I'm holding the spring and had the shifter up at the same time. Oh, that pinched me pretty good, but it's in there now. Oh yeah, that's good. That's nice, and it's cheap. It's a cheap, like. The main reason you would be doing this is if yours are junk. These are like made um, originally for like the Mark IV, Mark V's that have like, you know, 100,000 plus miles on them. Uh, this is, for me, this is more like a preventative maintenance. Like they, they, it's not if they wear out, it's when they wear out. So these will need to be replaced at one point or another, regardless. Um, I just seen it and I was like, you know what? I'm gonna buy some shifter stuff uh, while I'm in here before you know the clutch and the, the fuel and uh, the turbo I want to well, everything in the shifter department to be perfect and done um, so here I am now that's done we're gonna put the shifter back on and take a lot all right once you uh, whatever you decide to clip your shifter back down with whether it be like I said some zip ties metal zip ties I randomly had like some copper wire. I don't know. One of my roommates left it in my junk drawer, and I was like, "Yeah, yeah, this will work." Just use it as like if you can get some a hold of some safety wire. I'm sure it's cheap downtown if they even sell it like AutoZone or something. But yeah, after that, just uh, you know, put your boot back down, push everything in, and go to town shifting. You can kind of probably hear. How like notchy ish this is. I think the suit like this, this play right here is what's going to get um, eliminated when I buy that super pin. But all of this will have to come out for me to access this pin that's like, like up here-ish. So, I mean, that, that's another video for the time, like I said. But I'm hoping that my, uh, I'm hoping that the rest of the shifter pieces will come in today. I'm going to go take a lap around with this see how it feels pull the car in the opposite way and then uh, go ahead pull my intake out maybe even my battery and battery tray so I can uh, reach back there and replace the plastic bracket and uh, rubber bushings with the metal bracket and solid bushings so I said I took my intake out already so you got a 10 mil in there you got a clip right there and a clip right there and they just hold on to the battery you got a 10 mil there it's a 13 that actually holds your battery a 10 Another 10, and then there's a 10 up against the wall uh, back there. Sorry, I had to pull my phone out. Now the, the whole tray is going to come out. I'm going to take off this uh, little CTS pipe. This is the CTS pipe. It goes all the way down to my intercooler from the turbo. Um, that's going to be for sale with my turbo when I get my new one. It'll be that, the turbo muffler delete, the turbo, the wastegate. Um, yeah. All right. Once you get in here. So it's kind of washed out. There's the diesel geep short shift there. If you don't have it, you should probably order it. I'll put the link in the description. There is no other short shifter out there that can beat this. Not APR, not new speed, not shorties, not the OEM Audi, whatever. You need to buy this. It replaces the cable lens. It You get this. You, there's just so much thought that went into this short shifter. Trust me, you, you, you won't regret it. You see my cable ends are replaced with these nice um, aluminum pieces. But for me to replace um, the, the, the plastic bracket is this. And there's rubber bushings under these three bolts. There's the third one back there. So I'm going to have to take these cable. I'll have to take them off here and then here. I'm going to try and mark on the threads um, exactly where these are. So I won't have to like spend so much time aligning it. Aligning. Uh, these is the hardest part when you're doing this short shifter because not every car is the same and depending on how good your your bushings are inside and uh, and this and all that 
it plays a big role in uh, getting these set right because if you have this too far in or out or this one too far in or out one of these does uh, one three five and I think the other do two four six or maybe it's reverse one two three and another one's four five six it's something like that I don't I don't remember exactly but I'll go look it up here for you guys but I'm gonna have to take this off and then pull these these guys out and then these bolts and then this whole piece will come out and then uh, hopefully the other one shows up it's like 630 it said it'll be here by 8 tonight I highly doubt it but I'm at least gonna get this pulled out so I don't have to do this all later or tomorrow Good boy! That's a good boy! Good boy! Oh! Alright, after a lot of uh, playing around with this thing, I finally got the shifter cables out. It's kind of painted, but I had to have my girlfriend help me. She had to sit in the car and kind of direct me where the shifter itself was actually going. Holy crap, this bolt's long. Um, yeah, I got the shifter, the ends out of the ends, and then of course I have my tape mark like I showed you. This one's actually kind of, hopefully that didn't move at all. I'll have to retape that in a second. But this bracket is finally coming out. Um, it's about, what, 645. So they have like an hour and a half to bring this, and I'm betting it's just not going to be here till tomorrow. Luckily, the USPS people come through at like 11 in the morning. I'll probably be up at like 8, just impatiently waiting but uh, it's the last bolt for the bracket now the bracket can come out and I'll show you guys um, why it's not good ah. and you should slide right out there's a uh, two two uh, C clips that hold one on each of these so you have to remove those and then there's two bolts in the back and then one up against the transmission I'll show you when I Go over the light here. So you got the two bolts here, and then uh, there's one here on the side. You'll need a uh, which we call it long boy deep well to get that, and then your C clips go here and here. All right, we got the parts in. Um, they obviously didn't come in yesterday, so the car has been sitting apart all night long. This is the new shifter bracket. This is the new shifter bushings, um, and here's the old one. I'm gonna rip these open real quick, show you guys the difference, and then go throw these in. Alright, um, these are, this is the new, the new bracket I got, this is the old one, they are, uh, get them together, they're roughly the same thing, this one's metal, this is an actual OEM part, and it'll be linked down in the description, um, the Mark 4, 5, and 6 come with this one, and the Mark 7 has this plastic one, I'm not sure why, I actually messaged, um, Paul from ShopDap himself to see if he knows why, but uh, by looking at it, the only difference I really see the distance between this one and this one, like this distance, is greater than the distance on this one. Um, I don't think that's really going to have a difference. That's just like really where the boot for the shifter cables itself sits. I guess we're going to find out. There's a bunch of people running these on Mark 7s already on the forums. Um, that's how I found out. Alright guys, it took me about 30, 35 seconds to get these uh, aligned up and go in. When you're tightening them, um, you want to go around each one. A couple threads here, a couple threads on the one that goes that way, a couple threads on this one. And uh, you want to make sure that the, I put the bottom bushing, uh, is the one, the thicker one, the thicker bushing on the bottom. Make sure it's centered in there as you're, you're tightening them down. Um, Otherwise, it'll get hung up. But yeah, just go in a circle, tighten them down. I think they said uh, 30 uh, newton meters nm for a uh, torque. But I just I just snugged them down real real good. Now I'm gonna align my shifter cables back into their spots on the Diesel Geek short shifter, and then go inside and uh, and lock the uh, the shifter into position, and then put everything back together. I'm gonna plug. This is. Um a rod to hold your shifter in place. There's a hole over here and uh, you'll stick this in there. Really I just I kind of just ripped mine open and you'll see where this goes to lock it into place which I guess I had go ahead and do it now.
All right, guys, I finally got everything adjusted. Uh, you can see my little duct tape here. I was using to help me count threads. I couldn't get into first or second gear there for quite some time. Uh, I guess the, the distance between this and this on the old one is quite different. And uh, just where the threads were lined up, is, is, it needs to be pulled out a lot more. So if you have a Diesel Geek shifter and you're doing this upgrade, just know that even if you mark this one, it's, it's not going to matter. Um, it's not even to these two bolts. Like my rod shifter is just in these two. So um, this is the front to back and this is the side to side. Um, yeah, so that's why I couldn't reach first and second gear because this was too far in. So just let that be known. I actually found my old uh, paperwork for my, my Diesel Geek short shifter. This is back when I had my Mark IV in like 2013. So if you guys need some help, uh, these two pages are the adjustment procedure. Um, I'll take pictures and send it to you if need be. But I think I got it. I'm going to throw this pipe back in and my battery in and just throw my spare filter on to turn the car on and run through the gears with the transmission running. And then uh, if it doesn't need any further adjustment, then I'll be good to go. I'll go for a test drive, let you guys know how it feels. I'm very excited. Uh, I actually found that this bolt was loose and like this whole plate right here had a quite a bit of play and it kind of wore on my uh, spines down there. So I threw a, a really thin copper washer in here and then tighten this down and it's like super solid now hopefully it won't yeah you know, i have a feeling that washer is not not going to do the job for a long time but with this bolt on top of it i don't know maybe it should but we'll see i'll let you guys know in the future if uh if that holds if it doesn't hold up i guess really but uh don't mind the dirt super excited to get this done we've all I've also been out here we've been working on the m3 a little bit she replaced she pulled off this it was super cracked and nasty. Just did uh, this this grill, replaced that. Now she's doing the weather stripping in here. Um, you can see how, how shitty the old one was. Just cracked and fucking terrible. This one was all sun, sun faded and shit. She went through and bought all the seals for it. So that's what she's working on. This thing is going to be a, a fucking beast later in life. This is the, the filter that was on it. All beat up. I believe this was uh, like blue at one point or something, but this is unacceptable. So we're gonna get a new filter today as well for for her car. I can't believe it actually lined up the first time. Um, that's a first for me. Every time I've gone and realigned these things, I've had to do it two, three times. So today I was very particular. I pulled the instructions out. I counted threads. I went inside the cabin probably at least 12, 14 times, uh, just feeling like, pers I like move one single thread on the, the shifter alignment and go in the car. Do I like that? Eh. And I'd go then minus two, I feel that eh, and then plus three. Okay. Eh, and then I went back and forth until I found like exactly how I thought I would like it. And I just went for that drive. Drive feels so good. Um, everything paired together. Like I didn't go banging gears or anything cause the oil was still cold, but, uh, I'm about to actually throw my intake on that the filter that I had on there for the moment uh, wasn't oiled yet. I just keep a spare filter ready so I don't have to like clean one and oil it and then wait a day or two for it to dry. So that one doesn't have the stuff on it yet. Anyway, it feels fucking fantastic. If you guys ain't got any questions about any of this shit, I will try and explain it to you as best as I can. Um, like I said, if you need the, the instructions for the Diesel Geek alignment, let me know. My phone takes very good pictures. I'll just send them to you. Hit me up on Instagram, uh, br32yce. All right, guys. I just went out for a nice little drive with the girlfriend, banged some gears, did some no lift shift stuff. Yo, it felt so, 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 so good. Like, extremely better. I would um, go and buy that shit right away. Fifty dollars from Shop Dap for the bracket. Thirty dollars for the bushings um, for that bracket, and then. Uh, was it like 30 bucks for the the shifter shaft bushings um order them now order them right now go down below click order thank me later um it's great i'm also going to order the super pin like i said and uh, i think sleepy dub just ordered his too so we'll be letting you guys know how that shit feels i figured i'd get back on here and let you guys know how it felt um it feels great and uh yeah go buy it so uh yeah that's all I got.
I'm gonna eat food and go watch this Glax movie, so. Thanks for watching, I'll catch you on the flip flop.